it's Linda here and I'm back with another project and today uh, well I have to say I'm really quite thrilled with this one um, because I think it's quite a unique one in that well I haven't seen one done like this so I just I feel rather enthused about it um, and I'm hoping that you might appreciate why um, I don't know if you're like me, but I trawl YouTube and I do watch and look out for new ideas in paper crafting. And although travellers' notebooks um, aren't really that new now, I know they're very, very popular. And they've certainly caught my eye. But this is not a traveller's notebook. <laughs> OK, so um, it's on the same principle. I've seen some fabulous ones, much obviously much bigger than this, hold notebooks, laminated and just exceptionally pretty and just a really, really good idea for um, carrying notebooks around with you. But I've taken this concept and I've decided to apply it to, wait for it, tea bags. Okay, so I know there's an awful lot of um, avid tea drinkers out there, people who like their fruit teas, other teas. Whenever I do a tea project, I always feel like it's well, well received. So anyway, I hope this one is. Um, I've taken the traveller's notebook concept and I've applied it to this. So let me just show you. I've actually used some beads here on this band for mine. Um, it was kind of like a last minute thing. This is my prototype, so I haven't made another one. Um, but I, I think it works quite well and I quite like the idea of the beads. So, and I've got a little trinket on the side here. Um, I just think it looks really, really pretty and I love the laminating. So let me just show you how this works. So it opens out and inside we have these pockets of tea. Okay. So I'm calling this my traveller's tea book. <laughs> For want of a better description, I just think that it's brilliant. I just love the idea and even if nobody else likes it the fact is I like it so um, anyway I'm going to put it to one side now and I'm going to show you how to put it together um, obviously it's laminated so you would need a laminator um, unless you make a cover out of thicker card um, you know and then just jazz it up and make it look really really pretty but um, I like the idea of this because you can stick this in your handbag your tea's protected the laminated, um, the laminated um, cover is going to keep everything protected. This is small and portable. You take some of the, your favourite teas away on holiday like this with you. I, I just think it's really, really lovely. Anyway, um, I am going to stop waffling. I'm going to put it to one side now and I'm going to show you how to put these Traveller's Tea Books together. So thanks very much for joining me today. So I couldn't really make these any bigger um, because I'm relying on papers that are 12 inches wide okay so you know these fold up they will fit two standard um, like fruit teas in them um, when I say standard I'll just tell you that these are obviously English tea shop fruit teas and that's about two and five eighths by three okay and so they sit nice and snugly in there like that so obviously this is you know the size of your tea sachets is going to be governed by the size of these little folders if you like so don't look for anything that's too wide if you want to gift some tea like I said these are two and five eighths um, here in width um, I think you could possibly fit uh, a two and a half in there because there is a little a little leeway okay so anyway this is the cover so my cover is six and three quarters by three and three quarters okay so it's scored at two and seven eighths and then it's scored again at three and seven eighths Okay, so that's going to be for the cover. So I'll just move this out of the way. We'll get the cover done first. So what I would suggest is that you round the corners. 
because I think it just looks nicer. Okay, so when you've done that, obviously you need a laminating sheet. So I had, um, this was A4, and I've cut it down to fit my cover. Okay, so you need to pop it in like this. You need to try and ensure that, oops, let's just move this down, that the gaps on like either side here, the edges are equal. Okay, so I'm just going to move mine around a little. So I'm kind of governed by this bit here at the end. I don't know if you can see. So I've kind of gone by that and I've looked for something similar in width all the way around okay so once you've sort of got it to the right size you just run it through your laminator okay so my laminator is now warm enough so I'm just going to feed this through obviously I'm putting in the sealed side first Okay, so that's all nicely done. Um, so where we've pre-scored, I'm just going to go in now and, and reinforce those score lines like that. So this is now ready to take the pockets and to be put together. What I am going to do is I'm just going to round off the corners. So that's all ready now and we can look at um, putting holes and things in this later. So I'll just pop that to one side. Right then, for this you're going to need three pieces of designer series paper measuring 11 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. Okay, so I've been using papers from, from the beautiful Bird Ballad suite of papers. Um, I'll show you a few of the designs this is one that I'm using for today. Um, we've got these lovely wild birds. Um, that one. Um, and I've run out of what I used for the cover. Um, I've just loved working with this and I've made a lot of different projects with it. Um, so I've certainly had my money's worth out of this pack of paper. I will definitely say that. So anyway, let's pop it in and I'll just talk you through the scoring. So you want to score at 3 eighths and at three and one eighth at five and seven eighths and at six and then you're scoring at eight and three quarters and at eleven and a half okay and then turning it on the short side you're just going to make a score at three eighths of an inch So now I'm just going to gently burnish all of my score lines. So these ones here are a little bit tricky. Because they're so close together So that's all the burnishing done. So now we just want to do some cutting. I'm just going to take my snips. So I'm going to start off by cutting here on this corner and all I'm going to do is cut across here on the diagonal. So we go from around here through that corner and out to the other side. 
like that. Okay, and then on this one, we're just going to cut again on the diagonal up to that corner. Okay, and then just going to well, actually, I'm going to do this side first before I do the rest. So this piece here, you're cutting on the diagonal again. And this piece again, we're going across that corner on the diagonal, like that. Okay, so now that we've done that and freed up this, I'm going to turn it round this way. I'm going to tuck these out of the way and just cut this section here away. Okay. So you've got that. Now then, before we look at sticking anything down, I'm just going to tuck these in. Okay, I'm going to bring this across and tuck that in. Place that there like that. Fold this in and bring it over. Okay, so it's all together like that. And now you can either do this by eye or you can use a ruler. So I'm using a ruler. And all I'm going to do now is measure roughly about one and a quarter inches up and I'm just going to mark with a sharpie around about there and I'm just going to do it on the other side like that. Okay, so there's my sharpie pen. You can use a whoops, oh it's a light. You can use a pencil if you prefer. Okay. Now for this I'm going to take some big scissors, <sighs> bits of dust and everything over here. So what you need to do now is that line that we just cut there, you can either draw yourself a line from this point here to that corner or you can just do this bit by eye. So I'm feeling confident and I'm just going to do it by eye. Okay. So all I'm going to do is snip on the diagonal up towards that corner like that and I'm going to do the same on this side so I'm using that mark that I made with my sharpie and I'm just coming up here like that okay and now you can stick it down using your double sided tape Okay, so nothing complicated about this at all, nice and easy to follow, so just bringing those over and sticking it down like that. Okay, and so that's done. You need to make two more of those, okay? So I've already gone ahead and I've made mine. So I should just bring those in. And I shall put some tea into these ones. They're now ready to be placed into my little notebook. Okay, so now I'm just going to talk you through how to sew this up. I'm going to use my Sharpie here just to mark myself some holes. So what you want to do is look roughly for the centre, okay, no, you can measure it if you want to be really precise. So I'm doing that and then I'm just going to put a little dot each side of that centre mark there. Okay, I'm going to do the same down the other end. 
So if you really want to be more precise, then you can measure with a ruler. But I'm okay with that. So I'm using a handheld punch. This one is one eighth of an inch in width. And I'm just going to punch over where I made those marks. And the same the other end. Okay, now also we want to make a hole in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to use a paper piercer because I don't have anything else. Um, if you've got one of those um, clever uh, punches that can do you know deeper areas than fine but I'm just going to do this I think by eye <coughs> excuse me I'll give my eyes I'll, I'll use my ruler as a rough guide so I'm just going to measure roughly between the two center holes so that's roughly it's roughly three and a half inch three and a half inches um, Where's my sharpie gone? So half of three and a half I think is one and three quarters. So I'm going to look around about there to make my hole. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my paper piercer and I'm just going to go through like this and then back through the other side and then having done that I'm just going to use the thin end of my stylus to go through that hole again pushing it that way in okay so that's giving me a nice wide enough hole to be able to f feed through my corded elastic. Okay. Okay, so I got my corded elastic from Hobbycraft in the jewellery section. Okay, so just going to start by going through the front here at this hole and then up through the opposite one. And then you're coming back through the next one, the middle one and down to the bottom like that and then turning over you're going through the next hole that one back through here like that and then this one comes through here the center hole again like that Okay, and then I'm just going to cut my cord, my elastic cord. So we've got this in the middle, we're left with this one. Okay, and this is coming back through that centre hole, like that. Okay, so then you just want to pull it fairly tight. And then all you're going to do is tie a knot. Okay, just tighten that and cut it. Okay, and so now we're ready to put the little decorative band that we've got here okay now I've put beads on mine you obviously that's entirely down to you um, I've seen it done on a few videos um, for the travelers notebooks and I just like the idea I like something a little bit pretty so I've got myself a few little bits to decorate mine here okay I'm 
I've got a piece of elastic cord here which is about 10 inches long. Okay, so first off, I've put together this, so I've got a little finding, I've got a little chain link and I've put like a little trinket, a little charm on it. Um, and I'm going to just clip that up here at the top. She said. <laughs> So just pop that on there like that. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so now what we want to do, if you're going to if you're going to make yourself um, a beaded band, then you want to put these beads on first. Okay, so I'm just going to work out how I wish to put these on. Okay, so those are my beads done. So now all you're going to do is take those, the ends, and just push them through this centre hole. So you need to pull them through and then you need to decide how tight they're going to be. Obviously they've got to go around this, they have to be able to accommodate these other sleeves as well. Okay, so what I suggest you do is what I do is just tie gently. Don't 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 tighten this until you're certain that you have the elastic cord at the right um, the right strength really to hold everything in place. So I'm going to just leave that there lightly. I'm just going to feed my little pockets back through now onto these pieces. So I'll start off with this one. So that goes onto there. look through the next one, leave the one with the knot in, in the middle, in the centre. Okay, so we've got those in. And now I just need to see whether I've left enough length on this to secure my book um, nice and securely. So just bring that over those on the front and um, yeah I'm actually quite happy with the tension there um, so you know you can if you're not happy with it if you've tied it nice and loosely then you can obviously make the adjustment um, there in that centre knot so I'm just going to slip this one back out and just tighten that now as I'm happy with it so just pop that one out of the way and just find that knot, tighten it, and then just snip away the excess. Okay, and then I can place my little pocket back in. And that's that's it. It's as simple, but as effective as that. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that over, pop my little beads in place. And that is my little traveller's tea book. So it's a tea book version of a traveller's notebook <laughs> in the way that it's put together. Now, I am super pleased with this. Do hope you like it. Hope it inspires you to, if you haven't got one, get yourself a laminator for a start. Um, but I hope it does inspire you to maybe go away and have a look at making one of these yourself. I think this would make a really lovely and inexpensive gift for a tea lover. And also brilliant pillow gifts for at conventions and things like that. Okay, now I am going to be making a gift box for this. So that'll be a very quick video, but I'm just going to um, come back and 
I will show you how to make a gift box so that you can actually gift this to somebody in a really present, a really pretty presentation box. So that's it. That's my latest project. I do hope you like it. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be back with another project for you very shortly. So, bye for now.